Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself and Marta where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world from the last 24 or so hours as of the 25th of April. Hope you guys are having a lovely Saturday. Myself, I've spent a good chunk of this afternoon playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. Still really good, but I think I'm coming towards the end of this part now which is definitely a big feels bad man. But we're going to kick things off for today with TSMC and 2NM. Now unfortunately for this one, information is a little thin on the ground, but according to a report from digitimes.com, which of course will be linked in the description below this video, TSMC has already kicked off their research and development process for 2NM nodes, and is progressing in research and studies for nodes beyond 2NM. So TSMC just never seemed to stay still even for a moment, but that's probably why they've been on such a tear, of course, their 7NM uh, nodes are home to Ryzen, or find their home in Ryzen, should I say, and obviously we are going to be seeing their processes used in various chips. Speaking of that, we're going to move on now to something very interesting from NVIDIA. Now once again, we do have DigiTimes to thank for the source for this particular rumour, but I personally saw this report on tweaktown.com, so a big thank you to them, and of course to DigiTimes, you can find Tweaktown's article linked in the description below this video, which in itself does have DigiTimes linked as well. So, what do we actually have this time around? Essentially, the rumour is, is that NVIDIA is making something on a new 5NM node, and have ordered TSMC to actually create it for them. Now, apparently, according to Digitimes' sources, it's not going to be for Ampere, or RTX 3080, or 3070, whatever you want to call it. So that leads to a lot of speculation as to what it could be, because all that we do know is what it isn't. We know that it isn't Ampere. So what could it be? Well, I think the main contender for this, to be honest, is Hopper, which is the rumoured name for the follow-up to Ampere. Now, you may recall back in the day, there was a very interesting article on BillyBilly.com. Now, this will be linked below, but you will need to get your Google Translate out. But basically, they said that NVIDIA had a research paper examining a theoretical MCM design, and they also claimed 5NM was going to be involved as well. So, obviously this was just a theory then that they're going to be using an MCM design, but just this goes to show that the 5NM rumours for Hopper go back quite some time. So to be honest, I would be fairly confident putting some money on this being Hopper, but there is another candidate for what this could be for, and that is for Tegra, which obviously is used for numerous applications, including self-driving driving vehicles, and of course Tegra currently powers the Nintendo Switch consoles. Now, it could be for the Switch, that is definitely possible, but I think that's the least likely out of the two options that I post to you, simply because in, Nintendo don't tend to go for the cutting edge technology for their consoles anymore. They they don't need to, to be honest. They have had huge success with the Switch, even though it is the weakest out of the three. It still has great games on it, it still has some really nice graphics, and has gone on an absolute unstoppable tear for the last couple of years. So I just don't think, I don't see them going for 5NM, something so cutting edge for their next console, whether it's a Switch 2 or whatever it ends up being called. You know, it could be called Nintendo's Great Big Bubble Machine, for all I know. The point is, they don't tend to go for cutting edge, so I don't think it's going to be for the Switch. Obviously, there's no indication when this thing is coming out, so it could be for something way, way in the future. But I think, to be honest... I think we should all apply Occam's razor here and go with the most likely simplest scenario, which is that this is for RTX Hopper, but that is just my prediction. I'm not basing this off of any inside source or anything like that, this is just my assumption and my guesstimate based on logic and what we already know and what we've heard in the past and what Nintendo also tend to do as well. But of course, you're free to disagree. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think this is for Hopper or not? Anyway, enough talk about that. We're going to move on now to some Intel news, the first of which is going to be regarding Tiger Lake. So they have confirmed during their Q1 2020 earnings call that Tiger Lake's uh, Tiger Lake CPUs will be coming out in the mid of this year. Now, obviously, Tiger Lake is part of the 11th generation lineup and is exclusively, exclusively excuse me, for the mobility market. And Intel have released a 
report on their newsroom page, which of course you can find linked in the description below this video. And in the article, they do say, quote, in the middle of this year, we'll no doubt we'll debut our next generation mobile processor Tiger Lake using our second generation 10 nanometer process. Tiger Lake will deliver breakthrough performance and our customers have more than 50 fantastic Tiger Lake based notebook designs lined up for the holiday season. However, that isn't the only thing they actually confirmed during this. They also said that they are currently sampling their Xeon Ice Lake SP chips to customers and are expecting production shipments in the latter of this year. And of course, Ice Lake SP is based on the 10NM Plus process node. So long story short, we are going to be seeing Tiger Lake launching in the midpoint of this year, which of course has a quite a few variants in the family. We have Tiger Lake Y, Tiger Lake U, and Tiger Lake H. Of course, we've had various leaks across various points in the stack, and we're going to be seeing the Xeon Ice Lake SP uh, start initial production in the latter part of this year. So, Ice... not Ice Lake, sorry, Tiger Lake, excuse me, is finally showing its face this year once again is only for mobile but still nice to see speaking of tiger lake though we have another update regarding this thanks to pharonix now as some of you know a update is coming soon for linux linux 5.8 and one thing that's going to be a part of those changes is a tiger lake support and also for thunderbolt and uh, use slash USB for controllers as part of Tiger Lake as well. But this does kind of give us more of a release window rather than a vague hey midpoint this year for Tiger Lake as Linux's 5.8 cycle isn't even beginning until June and then should be stable in August. So we can expect sort of June, maybe July, for Tiger Lake laptops to start coming out. But of course, that is pure speculation from me based on what Pharonix have posed, but I think it is a reasonable enough assumption to make based on what they've said. Anyway, we're going to move on now to our final topic for today, which is regarding Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, of course, we already know that the original game is coming out on PC, which is awesome. I've already played the game. I played it on PS4 when it came out. It even made its way into my Game of the Year list for that year, and I, I loved it, obviously, as if it was part of my Game of the Year list. It was a really cool game. I had my eye on it ever since it was announced at E3, and it did not disappoint. It was a great time. And yeah, the mechanics, you know, they weren't exactly anything new or revolutionary, but it used the mechanics that it had really, really well. And it had a really great story and world, and I really can't wait to play this on PC, because it was gorgeous on PS4. Can't wait to see it on PC. But we're not talking about the old game. No, no, no. We're talking about a report from VideoGamesChronicle.com, and of course, you can find this linked below. And according to their sources, PlayStation and Guerrilla Games are planning a trilogy of Horizon Zero Dawn games. Now, according to their reports, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 started development not long after the first game's release. Apparently, it was initially planned for the PlayStation 4. However, unsurprisingly, according to this report, they have almost entirely shifted their focus to the next generation console. Does this mean we won't see it come out on the PS4? Hard to say, but it seems they are definitely prioritizing the game to come out on PlayStation 5 and hopefully we will see uh, number two come out on PC as well. Hopefully not in such a long delay this time but you know late is definitely better than never. However their rumours do not stop there according to again their sources. Apparently obviously the game is going to be bigger in scope with a larger game world although don't go too bad on that. I'm a big fan of having a world that is filled with stuff to do that's interesting to explore. I'm not really interested in a huge world that's got barely anything in it just for the sake of having a huge world. I'm not really a keen on when open world games do that. It's like, yeah, we're five times bigger than the last game. And I'm like, okay, is it actually going to be fun to explore that world though? That's what I want to know. Anyway, so also according to them, they initially planned to have some sort of cult feature in the first one, but they ditched it, so we may or may not see that return for number two. Uh, it might be a separate mode, or it might be part of the actual game itself. Personally, I hope it's an optional second mode, or like an optional feature, as part of the single player campaign. Because, well, personally, I just, I just really enjoyed playing my way through the game, and I tend to find that if you have forced cop, say for example, like in Resident Evil 5, just to pick the first game that comes to my head. If you don't have someone to play with, you have to rely rely on the AI. And as I'm sure you're aware, the AI 
in Resident Evil 5 for the player uh, for the other character was awful, to put it politely. I'm not saying Gorilla would do that, but it would it would concern me, to say the least, that it would be co-op focused and you'd have to have an AI partner if you didn't have someone who was available to actually play it alongside you, either next to you on the couch or uh, over the internet. So if that is true, I really, really hope this is optional, but obviously I could be talking for nothing. It could just be scrapped, like it was for the allegedly for the first game, or it could be an optional thing. But apparently PlayStation was very keen to see online functionality implemented in the sequel, so fingers and toes crossed that it's optional. I mean, if people want to play it cold, by all means, have fun. I just hope that we're not forced to do it. That's that's all I'd say. I'm glad to see that this really cool game is getting more games. I'm not, I'm not really surprised to see that it's getting a sequel because obviously the first game did really, really well because it's amazing. A trilogy, though? Awesome. Hopefully they can keep up the same level of quality that they did for the first game. The thing that I loved the most about the first game is the gameplay is really, really fun. But the story was really interesting as well. So fingers crossed that we see more greatness from Guerrilla Games for Horizon Zero Dawn 2. And hopefully it'll be a launch title or maybe an early-ish release title, if not launch, for the PlayStation 5. But we'll have to wait and see, of course. I would say that we'll find out this year at E3. But obviously not only is E3 not happening, Sony was not going to be there in the first place anyway. And it might be a bit too early to even see a teaser trailer for this. Either way, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Just help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.